of treason and a Fox News contributor. Newt, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Speaker. Well, it's good to be with you this morning. So you have already said that you are not intending to join the Trump administration. Why have you declined? Well, I, I want to be as helpful as I can be, and I think the unique value I bring, having been Speaker of the House, the person who developed GOPAC into a state legislative program, having helped Trump in the presidential campaign, this is the strongest Republican Party in history. More state legislators than we've ever had since our founding in 1854, more governors, uh, control of the House, control of the Senate with the presidency. And I think we need some strategic planning that looks out uh, to 2025 and says, over the next eight years, how are we going to serve the American people so well at every level that we consolidate this belief that Republican government is effective, serves the values of the American people and works. And that's a unique role. It's one I played a little bit with Reagan, played a lot, obviously, with the contract with America and as Speaker. Uh, but I think that it gives me an opportunity to try to help the entire party, including uh, President-elect Trump, uh, in a way that may be fairly unique. So, so size up what we know so far for us, uh, uh, Newt, in, in terms of these positions and these um, uh, expectations. Uh, Jeff Sessions as Attorney General, um, Chief of Staff Reince Priebus. Give us what the priorities are as you know it in terms of Donald Trump and, and where he's uh, moving toward. Well, let me say, first of all, I thought his very first decisions to bring in both Steve Bannon as a strategist and Reince Priebus as the guy who runs the day-to-day -day chief of staff operation was a brilliant decision. It combined somebody uh, in Reince Priebus who is probably the most important Republican National Committee chairman of modern times, did an amazing job, had 7,500 paid people in the field, provided the grassroots muscle to match uh, the Trump ability with social media, uh, and uh, is really a guy who has a network nationwide that he can use to serve the president. Uh, Bannon is a brilliant strategist, a very sophisticated guy, uh, deeply underestimated by people like the New York Times. And Bannon, I think, gives a, a cutting edge and, and a sophistication to uh, Trump's ability to plan and look ahead. That was, those were great choices. Uh, General Flynn, who has written a book recently that everybody can get and, and look at, uh, has been a very dedicated opponent of Islamic supremacism. He understands the war with ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Boko Haram and all the other groups that are engaged. Uh, I think he will be a very good national security advisor. I have to say, Jeff Sessions, who I thought could have done either defense or the attorney general, I personally always thought he ought to go to the attorney general's office. He'd spent 12 or 13 years working for the Justice Department. He'd been the U.S. attorney. He'd been the attorney general of Alabama. He serves on the Judiciary Committee. And, and frankly, some of the lies that the left has taken are just lies. <clears throat> Jeff Sessions prosecuted the head of the Ku Klux Klan for murder, got the death penalty, and supervised, and he, he, he was executed. He, fought, he brought an $8 million fine against the Ku Klux Klan in Alabama, which destroyed it, bankrupted it, drove it out of existence. Uh, he has a very good record. He was the opponent to Governor George Wallace and the hardcore segregationists. And it is sad to watch some people on the left try to smear him because Jeff Sessions is a very honest and very decent human being, deeply committed to the civil rights of every American. So how much of a challenge will it be to get him through the process? That's Jeff Sessions. Already uh, the left and the media are, are really attacking Jeff Sessions uh, and this pick. Well, look, I think this is a good test of uh, President-elect Trump. Anybody he picks is going to be controversial on the left. Uh, unless he picks people who are totally controversial to his own base. Uh, and so I think that he has got to get in the rhythm of getting people through. I think Mitch McConnell can do it. I think it'll take some work. I also think, frankly, that when you, you recognize that there are a lot of Democrats, I think 24 Democrats are up for election in 2018. Do they really want to start out as bitter and anti-Trumpers? Ten of them come from states that uh, President-elect Trump carried. Uh, and I think that this will be a good first test. Uh, when you look at the record and you look at the facts, Jeff Sessions is a very decent, very solid person. Uh, there is no excuse except ideology for opposing him. And I don't believe that there, you're going to get uh, 51 ideological votes in the Senate against Jeff Sessions. I think he will be confirmed. How, how 
tough will it be to reverse what has gone on in the Department of Justice and so many of these agencies? I'm going to ask the same question to the attorneys generals that we've got on coming on later, Michael McKay and John Ashcroft. But the idea that so many of these agencies have been politicized, whether it's the IRS targeting conservatives or the you know, Department of Justice trying to shut down the investigation into the Clinton uh, Foundation of the FBI, is that going to be a, 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 a tough thing to reverse what has happened under Eric Holder's uh, Department of Justice? It's going to be extraordinarily difficult unless President-elect Trump decides to take a lesson from Governor Scott Walker. Uh, Governor Walker understood that he had to get control of the bureaucracy in Wisconsin. He set out to do that. The uh, people involved in the unions were bitterly opposed. Uh, 100,000 people demonstrated in Madison. They occupied the Capitol for six months. There were death threats against Governor Walker and his wife, Tonette. Uh, but he had the courage to keep going. If we're going to actually change Washington, if we're going to drain the swamp, to use uh, President-elect Trump's phrase, he is going to have to have, at the very beginning, a very strong bill that allows us to fire corrupt, dishonest, uh, and, and uh, in some cases illegal uh, civil servants who are currently protected by rules that make it virtually impossible for the elected official, the American people, to get control of the bureaucracy. What are you hearing in terms of the next positions that we're going to uh, hear nominations for? He said that expect more today. What do you think the priority list is? I, uh, look, I don't have any inside knowledge, and I think even the people of inside knowledge don't have inside knowledge. The fact is that Donald J. Trump is an entrepreneur who has run a $10 billion worldwide system. He is going to make all the key decisions. Uh, he is going to think about a lot of them for a long time. And when he thinks he's reached a judgment, he'll announce it. But he's not going to do so beforehand. As I said to you a minute ago, I would have been equally uh, pleased had Jeff Sessions ended up as Secretary of Defense. And I actually thought for a while that's what was going to happen. So uh, I, th I think this is Trump's administration. It's going to be Trump's government. He's going to make the key decisions. He's going to listen to a lot of people. But in the end, uh, we'll see what he decides today about the next couple of appointments. He, he is certainly interviewing people who are extraordinary. General Mattis is an old friend and somebody who may be uh, one of the best war fighters in the last uh, 30 or 40 years. Uh, the fact that he's being discussed as a possible Secretary of Defense, I think, is very heartening. Oh. All right, we'll leave it there. Newt Gingrich, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks so much. Good, thank you. We will see you soon. Vice President-elect Mike Pence at the helm of the Trump transition team. But what will his role be like once the new administration takes office? Former Vice President Dan Quayle will join me live next with some insight and advice for his fellow...